Mrs. Dando here, your school counselor. And I'm here today with your counseling in the classroom lesson for this week. And as always, no matter where you're watching from, I am so glad you're with us. Because I love sharing lessons about something called social emotional learning. It's a lot of words. It's just a big fancy way of saying you're learning about your thoughts, your feelings, and how they help you become a better learner, friend, and part of your community. Sweet. Speaking of your community, your community can be so many different places. Home, your church, a sports team, your family. But one of the biggest communities that you are a part of every single day, your school. Your school community is such an important place and it's important because you're part of it. And in our school community, that's Ridgeview, we've been learning about courage this month. He's the bravest baby I ever saw. Now, I'm pretty sure you've all heard of the word courage before. There are a lot of different definitions of courage out there, but at our school, we've been learning this. Courage is choosing what is helpful, right, and kind, even when it's hard, or scary. When I read that definition, it got me thinking about something that can be really hard for a lot of kids at school. And that is the courage to make the right choice. Where am I? What year is it? Is The Rock president? Every day, no matter where we are, we are faced with so many choices that we have to make. Sometimes they're little choices like what am I gonna wear to school today? What should I have for breakfast? Am I gonna brush my teeth or not? Ew, gross. Please do that, please. But at school we have some bigger choices that can have bigger consequences. And one of the choices that we have to make daily is the choice of who we're gonna be friends with. Don't raise your hands. Don't point at anybody in the room. Have you ever had a friendship that started out really good but it ended up not going so well. Our choice to make healthy friendships is such an important thing. We have the choice every day about who we're gonna play with, who we're gonna hang out with, who we're gonna spend our time with. And we need to be sure that we are making a choice that's gonna make us a better person. We have to have the courage to be part of friendships that make us feel good and walk away from those friendships that don't make us feel so good. So what does that look like? What's a healthy friendship? What's an unhealthy friendship? I'm glad you asked. We're gonna talk about that today. Because I'm a school counselor, I know a little bit about that. Because when we have the courage to make good decisions about our friendships, we can be around people who help us grow, who help us feel good. So. What's a healthy friendship look like? What? What is it, woman? What? I got this. Wherever you're at right now, I want you in your head to think of two or three people who you would consider to be your good friend. They could be a friend that's here at school with you. It might be a friend who you know outside of school. Who are some people who are valuable or important to you? A healthy, successful relationship often looks like this. You and that friend get along most of the time. Most of the time. I mean, you guys are kids. You're not gonna get along all the time. For the most part, you both show kindness to one another. You both respect one another. You're loyal and caring and show empathy to each other. If you're not sure what empathy can look like, take a look at our kindergarten first and second grade lesson from this week. It's okay to watch it. When you spend time with this friend, you enjoy it. You look forward to it. You're not like, ugh, oh my goodness, I have to go see that friend again. Because when you're around that person, you feel good about yourself. They say things that encourage you and you say things that encourage them too. You're the best. When they see that you need help, boom, they help you out. And this might go without saying, but a true friend is not one who's going to physically hurt you. Uh-oh, looks like we're gonna have to do some fighting. We shouldn't be spending our quality time with people who consistently harm our bodies, like in any way. That is not a healthy friendship. And a successful friendship is one where we're careful with our words, careful to not call each other names, and we try really hard 
to not hurt each other's feelings. Now listen to this. Sometimes a friend will hurt your feeling. It just happens. Nobody's perfect, but in a healthy friendship, those friends try really hard to not do things to hurt each other's feelings. So now that you know what a healthy friendship does look like, let's talk about what an unhealthy friendship looks like. These are friendship red flags. As you think about your friendships, see if you recognize any of these red flags. Before I tell you about them, just because you see some red flags does not mean that you absolutely can't be friends with that person anymore. It also doesn't mean that that kid is a bad kid. We're all kids here. Well, I'm, I'm not a kid. You guys are all kids here, and we're all still learning and growing. We all maybe do some red flags sometimes. One big red flag could be a friend who lies often, or maybe you lie often. Tell her the truth. If you're not comfortable telling the truth in front of your friend, red flag. Another red flag, you guys argue, like a lot. Remember, some arguing is normal, but you should get along more often than you fight. This argument is just not my cup of tea. If you're constantly in a disagreement or constantly having to apologize to each other, that's a lot of arguing. That's not really fun for you or for them. Another red flag, they disrespect you. Maybe you're sharing a story about something going on in your life and they're laughing. That's disrespectful. Maybe they make fun of the way that you dress or things that you and your family do. That's pretty disrespectful. Maybe they laugh at the food that you bring for lunch or tell you that you constantly need to change things about yourself. Red flag. Disrespect is one of those red flags that can look different for each one of us. Sometimes for girls, it's more like spreading rumors. Sometimes for boys, disrespect can look like trash talking while you play sports. No matter what it looks like though, it doesn't feel good to be disrespected. Another red flag, embarrassing you. Like the friend goes out of their way to tell embarrassing stories about you or point out things that might embarrass you. That is a big red flag. It's just not funny or cool. Another red flag, your friend gives you the silent treatment. I see this a lot when kids get in arguments with each other. Instead of talking it through, they just don't talk to each other at all. Like, totally silent. You were completely ignoring me. The silent treatment doesn't really help us solve any problems. And it's just hurtful. Another red flag, that friend is excluding you. Meaning they're not letting you be part of the group anymore. Maybe they didn't like something you said. Maybe they didn't like something you did. So they made a choice to leave you out. Oh, rude. That's a red flag. Now that's not a complete list of all the red flags in unhealthy friendships, but hopefully that gives you an idea of friendships that are working well for you and friendships that aren't working well for you. A healthy friendship is gonna make you feel good about yourself, help you make good choices, and a good friend is gonna be okay with you having other good friends. Okay, so let's say you're sitting here listening to this and you're seeing lots of red flags in your friendships. What do you do? Uh. Oh, <laughs> First of all, try talking to those friends. I cannot believe you had so many red flags in our friendship. We're done. Okay, that is not what the conversation's gonna sound like. Not at all. The conversation's gonna sound a little bit like this. Hey, when I heard that lesson today, I felt a little sad because I realized there are some red flags that you and I have. Could we talk about those? Try to work it out? I used an I feel statement. That just means rather than accusing the person who did something wrong, I'm simply gonna state what I'm feeling and why I feel that way. I'm gonna give the other person a chance to do the same. A lot of times when you see red flags in the friendship, your friend might be seeing them too. Now, let's say you heard that list of red flags and you know, absolutely know, that this is an unhealthy friendship for you. Too many red flags, Mrs. Dando. Or maybe you're thinking of a friendship in the past that you did have to end. I'm here to say this, and maybe this is the first time you've ever heard a grown up say this, but it's true. You don't have to be friends with everyone. What? But you do have to respect everyone. I know, that's the hard part. And here is how we are going to not be friends. Have you ever heard an adult say that before? There is a right way to do this and a wrong way to do this. And I'm gonna show you the right way. Hmm, this looks new. Make it safe. One, 
Spend your time with the people who make you feel good. You know, there's a kid in your class who makes you feel bad about yourself, who you just don't get along with. Don't spend your time talking about them. Don't spend your time worrying about them. Spend your time having fun and playing with the people who do make you feel good. Yeah, it's as easy as that. Focus on the friends who make you feel good. Second way to not be friends with someone, no making sides or teams. Let me explain. Let's pretend these two girls finally decided after years of an unhealthy friendship, they're better off just not being friends. Both talked, they both set some healthy boundaries with one another, and now they're ending their friendship. What they're not gonna go do is go back to class and tell people to be on their side. We don't wanna turn this into a battle of one kid versus the other kid, and who's gonna be on my team? That never, ever, ever ends well. Which leads me to my third thing, you still have to be kind. Even if you're choosing to not be friends with someone, being courageous enough to walk away from a friendship that is not helping you make good choices. That does not give you the right to go around and talk badly about that person. That doesn't give you the right to start rolling your eyes at that person. That doesn't give you the right to start spreading rumors about that person. We can choose to not be friends and still show kindness and respect to that person. Which leads me to my fourth point of how to not be friends with someone. We can still be polite. Maybe Mr. Jefferson and I have decided we are not friends anymore. When I see him in the morning, I don't need to toss my hair, roll my eyes at him, and walk by him with a little sass in my step. I can still greet him, say good morning, smile at him, give him a wave, and be polite. By the way, Mr. Jefferson and I are cool. And my fifth tip, you have to remember that no matter how that friendship ended, every person in our community is valuable and just like we say every day they belong they matter and they are worthy just because they weren't the right friend for you doesn't mean they won't be the right friend for somebody else and that's okay it's tough to have the courage to walk away from a friendship that doesn't make us feel good remember just because you saw some red flags doesn't mean the friendship has to end right away you can still fix things you can still grow and you can still problem solve. All things that you've heard about here at school before. But if the friendship is changing the way you feel about yourself, encouraging you to make bad choices, have the courage to respectfully walk away from that friendship. Okay, everyone, I think I've taken up enough of your time. Have the courage to make the right choice, even when it's a hard choice. That's true courage. And before I go, just remember, at Ridgeview or wherever you're watching from, you belong, you matter, you are worthy. See you guys around.